Hello Lex players and welcome to my new video. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lex and today I wanted to show you how I look at this gift. Thank you. What a photo bomb. Anyway, I wanted to show you how I went about connecting two of my neighborhoods on Lorien together with a land bridge. This was completely unplanned until now. I didn't realize that it very evenly uh they very evenly matched up like this is the neighborhood, the first neighborhood at the back of the island, and this is the one forward. These are the two I'm connecting. And that area where the pergolo is standing is perfectly parallel to where I need to connect the land bridge. So it's gonna be a straight line. That's like the first part of creating a land bridge is making sure that it lines up. It doesn't have to line up perfectly. You have to decide for yourself whether you want it to be a straight bridge or a very curvy one. Totally up to you and your island aesthetic. This worked for me. And step two is going to be decorating either side. My first step was swinging benches as fences. Six and a half hours later. It took a while, but it was worth it. I actually didn't count how many spaces there were. Here I am trying to figure out how many cliff tiles there are so I know how many swinging benches to place. Didn't even count beforehand, and I happened to make the exact right amount of swinging benches. I'm using these to create fencing on either side because they are tall enough that they go above the cliff tier. This works better as an illusion if you have cliffs in front of the swinging benches as opposed to putting the swinging benches on the side like I am, but it works either way. I'm doing it this way because that's the direction my land bridge is facing. You could of course also make your land bridge a little bit wider and use actual fencing or you could use things like jail bars. There are all kinds of hacks to create fencing for your land bridges. That is one reason I decided to go with a straight land bridge so that I could put fences or you know swinging benches against the sides of them easily and it would all fit. I decided to go ahead and decorate this side of this neighborhood even though I'm not going to decorate the rest just because this is visible from the bridge. I should have have edited the house exterior here for, um, what is her name, for Ioni, but I didn't. So you're just gonna see this bright blue non-matching house in the middle of my island. I also, while I have you here and I'm just like casually decorating, I've been considering deleting Lorien when I finish it this time so that when I change the dream address in the future, it doesn't change from this island. I think this might be my favorite maybe build on Lorien so far. I thought this would be my forever island, but I'm just, I'm curious because I, I'm really tired of losing my build. You know, like after this, my current dream address is set to the previous island build for Lorien, which was like a colorful town, a colorful city, very rainbow, very beautiful. And I'm gonna lose that forever once I update the dream address with the builds that I have now, which are better in my opinion. I like the island better now than I did in the colorful city version but I'd still like to be able to visit the colorful city and I won't be able to. So I'm like, if I redesign it again by flattening, then I'll lose this island and I don't wanna do that, but I also have an almost complete catalog. So I'd lose all that anyway. I've got a lot of thinking to do before we come to the end of this island design, but I will let you chill and relax with this beautiful lo-fi Liam music for a bit and I'll check back in when I have something new to share. Here I am just starting the trees. I tried to alternate them. I know you don't have to dig a hole to plant a tree, but it was easier for me to like visualize where the trees would go. Anyway, enjoy as I try to figure all of this out. I decided to use this custom design of leaves behind a lot of the trees because I was like, okay, these are tiles that won't really be visible once I uh, have the trees grow, once I time travel forward. Someone once asked me how I managed to decorate all the time without 
you know, being able to see the trees and flowers growing. And the answer is that I just wing it every time. Sometimes I do have to go back and adjust a few things once everything's growing. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't look good like that. But in this case, it actually turned out fine. I also am now obsessed with layering my log stakes like this. Look at how good they look. I'm gonna create, you know, like a little arc of them around the pathway from this like bridge area up to the neighborhood. I just think it looks so good framed with all of these log stakes. And yeah, I loved the layering so much. I've never arranged them like this before. I think it looks so good. Also, after my last build, I became obsessed with this vine, the giant vine. I realized it looks so good on this island. I should have used it a lot more in my other builds, but I hadn't yet discovered how much I loved it in foresty areas. So if you're doing a foresty island, the giant vine is so perfect. I thought it would be more jungly or abandoned. No, it looks great in just your average woodsy area. Phenomenal. I slowed it down so you could see a little walk through here. This is what it looks like so far with one side decorated. Now, obviously I've got to put some decor down on the other side and yeah, I know they're not grown, but I just wanted to just see the vibe that was already in progress here. I think it looks so good even before they're grown, like just having all of that lushness close to the ground. I don't know, I like it. It was like a little flower field before it became, you know, a lush forest at the end of the video. I say that like it's already happened for you, it hasn't. You have so much to look forward to in your future here on my channel. Again, I'm just putting these custom designs right behind where I'm planting trees because you can't see flowers or other plants immediately behind trees. And so it's just to remind myself, I don't need to plant anything in those spaces. It'll just be a waste of flowers, shrubs, whatever I'm using. So that's just like a personal reminder. And because it looks cuter to have something on the ground there. So if I'm taking like angled photos and it happens to be visible, boom, there's a custom design there. If you can't tell, I got really into using alternative trees in this build. I used the baobab tree and I used the decaying tree. I used cedar or no, cypress plants to create, you know, like tree illusions. I used the pine tree. I was basically trying to make it seem as lush and full as possible. And I was kind of limited in how many trees I could place because it was surrounded by cliffs and water. So these items just kind of fill it out for me. They make it feel a little bit more foresty in my opinion.
I figured while I was in this area, I could also create a backdrop for this other neighborhood that I built. I'm gonna put some shrubs on top of this cliff here just to make it prettier, I guess. I ran out of plumerias halfway through this build and had to switch to yellow hibiscus flowers, but I don't think they'll be blooming when I place my DA anyway, like where I set my DA. This is the finished build. I am so proud of it. I also wanted to mention while we're here that the focus of this video was the land bridge itself, but something really important to remember when you're doing a land bridge is that the most strenuous part is going to be the area around it because there are two sides to most land bridges and that's gonna take the most time. It took me like maybe 10 minutes to actually terraform this bridge. And then it took me like hours longer to decorate everything, make it look nice. You can see all of the angles here. It does look better with the custom designs behind the trees where you can see it. So I'm glad I did that. It looks so full and nice. I'm so happy with these colors. I'm happy with the time of day. And yeah, I think this build turned out so cute. I was so lost on what to do with this part of my island. And it's such a relief to just have it done. It's out of the way, it's ready. Look at how cute those log stakes are functioning as a little fence between the woods and the pathway. We are vibing, we're thriving. I'm gonna walk you over here. This is the next area I think I need to build is the museum. Not sure what I'm gonna do here yet, but it's looking good so far. And here is the other neighborhood. It's also looking good. I'll let you see kind of the backdrop here. It's more lush. You can't see a lot from here, but it does feel nice to have the area behind this neighborhood completely finished. I was trying to find a place to do my little outro for the day and I ran into Lolly who was trying to talk to me and she invited me to her house. I always say no to my villagers. So I went to her house. I wanted to say thank you so much to all of my members where the video ends. I appreciate you all so much. And if you're not a member and you'd like to become one, the link is in the description so you can check out perks and everything else that goes into being a member on Lex Play. Thank you all so much for watching today. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Today was actually my mom's birthday, August 17th when I'm filming this. So say happy birthday, mother play in the comments and I will relay it to her. It was also my sister's birthday this week but she became an adult so we don't need to inflate her ego by also telling her happy birthday. Okay, that's all. I'll see you next time. Bye.